Here's an example of a full skeleton reaction that you are going to have to balance by any means necessary, essentially. But when you see these skeleton reactions, most important part right here, don't look to your redox table. Okay? Most often, your redox table will be of no use. In this case, it, you could use it as a check, but vast majority of the time, it will be of absolutely no help to you. So when we are dealing with these skeleton reactions, regardless of the method you choose, you will still have to balance atoms as always, but you all have to balance electrons as well and charge. So those are the things you must take into account. So, steps. First thing we're going to do is balance everything that is not oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, so that's done here. I had the two CRs in the dichromate, so I put in a two over here to balance those out. Okay, notice that we have oxygen on the left hand side, none on the other. We're not going to worry about that yet. Okay, we will take care of that. All right, next thing I'm going to do is to determine the oxidation numbers of everything. Okay, now some of them are given, right? The, the tin 4 is given, chromium 3 is given, tin 2 is given. This minus 2 is not the oxidation number I care about. That's the charge of that whole ion. I need to figure out the charge on the O and the CR. Well, the O is minus 2, as it always has been. 7 of them for minus 14, which means the two chromies must add up to plus 12. Remember, plus 12 at minus 14 equals minus 2. Well, that's good. So then each chromium, therefore, is going to be plus 6. All right. So next step, we are going to determine our electron loss and gain. Okay. So here's just a slide showing the oxidation numbers. Now let's get our electron loss and gain. So the dichromate, the chromium within it, goes from plus 6 to a plus 3. The tin going from a plus 2 to a plus 4. All right, so we've got the chromium is going from plus 6 to plus 3. So that's a gain of 3 electrons. 3 electrons per chromium. Okay, well, there are two chromiums involved which means there must be a total gain of six electrons for the whole entire formula unit of CR207. And that total number is the important number that you need to balance the whole reaction. For tin, there's only one of each, so it's a little simpler. Two electrons lost per tin, and then there is only one, so it's two electrons overall. Okay, so now we have our half reactions. I wrote them out, I broke them out separately here. Um, and without dealing with the oxygen yet. So we have a six electron gain and a two electron loss. So now, next thing we're going to do is to balance those electrons. We cannot have unequal numbers of electrons. So I take my tin half reaction and multiply it by three, like it says there. And then come up with my net from that. So there's my net reaction where my electrons are balanced. But I'm still not done. Remember, we have to balance electrons, we have to balance charge, and atoms. I just did my electrons. Now I'm going to work with my charge, and that depends on whether you are an acid or base. In this example, we're an acid. So it means I'm going to use H+. Plus if I was in base, I would use OH minus. I'm going to use H plus as a free variable. Put as many H plus ions wherever I need in order to balance the charge out. As it says here, we got to make sure the reactant and product charges are identical. Not that equal zero, it has to be the same number. And when you're doing this, the biggest mistake is you guys forget to use coefficients. Coefficients are involved here. So for instance, the products, I've got two times plus three and then 3 times plus 4. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 12 from the tin gives me a plus 18 total product charge. 
reactants, I have three times a plus two for six minus two is a total charge of plus four. Okay, so now that doesn't balance out obviously, so I'm going to use my H's and put them wherever I need. So I'm going to have to add 14 H's over here. And now my charge is balanced. Okay, so I'm going to write that out on the next slide. So I have 14 H pluses. plus dichromate plus tin produces tin 4 there are three of these and three of these two CR3 plus okay, that's what I have so far so now I've balanced my electrons and we did that by multiplying the tin half reaction by 3. I balance the charge by adding H plus. Now I'm going to balance the atoms out. When I'm balancing atoms, if you notice here, you've got H's here, you've got O's here, you have neither on the product side. So what we're going to do is use water to sort that out. 14 H's on the reactants, none on the product, That would correspond to seven waters. Then I would check my O's. I have seven O's over here. I have seven O's over there. So I'm good to go. Electrons, charge, and atoms. Doesn't really matter which order you go, but you got to make sure all three of these are taken into account. Okay. Now, one thing you, that often occurs is once you put your H's in, you end up splitting the difference to figure out your waters on the other side. Doesn't have to be the case all the time. Okay, make sure you determine where and how many you need of those waters.